What's up guys, Meow, and I'm back with another video, and we've got to review the 2021 Talladega Cup Series race. Um, kind of a little bit late with the, the filming of this, I had to, you know, go do something, but anyway, so before the race, actually earlier today, uh, NASCAR announced a new partnership with the Boys and Girls Club of America, focusing on STEM education, career development, and diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. I am a huge fan of this. I am extremely happy to see this. Um, congrats, NASCAR, with that. Um, there was another update posted about Derek Lancaster. If I can find the tweet uh, with the screenshot of it, I will put that in the description down below, um, which down there you will find also find, um, obviously, you know, make sure you use my code ANGJ for free shipping on orders of $20 or more at Diecast. Also, um, I'll put the... Uh, the Steve Lavender random fantasy picks link down there that I was given uh, after making my pick for next week's race at Kansas. Um, and also, there will be a link down there to Diecast Buffet's Season 3 uh, NASCAR Girl Last Cup Series uh, finale race. Um, I, I don't know if he's streaming right now. If he's still streaming by the time I'm done with this video uh, or whatever. But the link will be down there. Go check it out. Um, yada, yada, yada. All that. I'll also be doing a video for that probably either tonight or tomorrow. All that aside, uh, so Cody Ware and BJ McLeod would end up going to the back to start the race. Ware for multiple inspection failures, McLeod for unapproved adjustments, and then Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, and Harrison Burton, who is also making who Burton making his first career cup start, um, would all join them, all for unapproved adjustments as well. The race did not start off well for Kyle Larson, lap one or two. Takes it down pit road early with high engine temps. He ends up going to the garage with engine issues, and his day would be done. Uh, we get a competition caution at lap 25, and uh, pit road penalties were a big deal today. Um, on this one, Harrison Burton got a penalty for removing equipment. It was the gas can. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. got a speeding penalty, and Ryan Priest got a crew member over the wall penalty. Uh, Ross Chastain would come down pit road again to replace the transponder. He would get his spot back in line. Um, prior to the restart and um we go a little bit later and then we get a caution that comes out under during commercial no less um joey gaze spun which honestly sucks because he's obviously running the the davy allison tribute scheme this week which is really cool and i really hope it gets offered uh by lionel um but anyway eric on reported he would pit um after he reported a vibration gaze ended up saying he cut a tire which has caused him to spin so we get back going and uh, we get a caution on the final lap of stage one, uh, going down the backstretch into turn three. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Denny Hamlin get together. Hamlin gets turned. Well, basically what happened was you had uh, DeBenedetto Blaney, I think somebody else, or it was, I think it was DeBlaney, DeBenedetto Blaney, uh, Logano, Hamlin, and, and uh, Stenhouse all kind of lined up together. And they were just all bumper to bumper. And basically what happened was uh, Hamlin kind of got out of kind of got moved out of line a little bit, and then he ended up getting touched or turned by Stenhouse, uh, which he was turned into Logano. Logano gets turned, and he ended up getting airborne, flipped, and uh, a couple other cars spun. Kozlowski and Briscoe spun as well. Uh, Hamlin managed to save it after he again got into Logano. Um, and watching. Oh my god. Watching Logano's flip was crazy. Some were comparing it to Brendan Gaughan's flip a couple years ago. It it was basically like in the same spot almost. But Logano, his spoiler or decklet or whatever, uh hit the right front A post or hit the right side A post on Bob Wallace's car. It didn't damage it a ton. There was some damage, but not really much if anything at all. But Bob Wallace did report, you know, like he needed a new pair of shorts or something like that afterward. God damn. Like, that wreck was crazy. And the fact that, like, Logano didn't, like, I mean, he barely, I mean, Wallace barely got any damage. The fact that that wasn't worse for him was crazy. Logano was fine. Um, he gave his thoughts afterward, and honestly, and he made the comments that, you know, with, with, this, with the big spoilers and, you know, and this and that, um, like, NASCAR needs to do something. And he wasn't too happy about that. I understand 
why Lagan is making those comments. And if you're not sure, they were posted earlier. Uh, you can look them up. You know, a lot of fans had a uh, you know had a reaction to it. Uh, David Reagan quote or NASCAR NBC posted one of the, uh, one of Logano's quotes, and David Reagan quote tweeted that and said, "El Mayo, it's the drivers that are ca- that are causing the cautions," and he's not wrong there. Um, a lot has been made about the package, especially with Ryan Newman's crazy wreck at the Daytona 500 last year. Um, but what do you supp- what do you do? I mean. If you try to make the cars slower, they're just going to be more bunched up, and the wrecks are going to be bigger. If you try to speed them, get them faster, you're then the hits are going to be harder. Now, some will be like, "Well, then just take Talladega and Daytona off the schedule. Problem solved." One, that's bullshit because this shit can still happen at any track. You know, it's just the super speedways where it's a lot crazier. I mean, hell, look at Kansas last year, Ryan Priest almost flipped after hitting the inside wall um, in, during the regular season, and Anthony Alfredo flipped in the Xfinity race during the playoffs last year at Kansas. And that's where we're going next, by the way. So, yeah, flips can happen anywhere. It's just the super speedways where it happens more often. And again, some would be like, well, then just take the track off schedule. No, because that's never going to happen. So... We'll see what happens because, again, next year we get the next-gen car. We'll have to see what happens. Hopefully NASCAR could figure something out with a package, but, again, we'll see. Uh, but Matt DiBenedetto, uh, Matt DiBenedetto would get his first career stage victory here. Ryan Blaney second, Chase Elliott third, Denny Hamlin fourth, William Byron fifth, Chris Buescher sixth, Alex Bowman seventh, Christopher Bell eighth, De- uh, Kevin Harvick ninth, and Michael McDowell in tenth. Most of the leaders pit. Corey LaJoy gets the free pass. Um, a couple guys stayed out. Elliott would end up being the leader to start stage two. Uh, obviously, Gano's day would be done. And then we start getting uh, green flag pit stops around lap uh, around lap 25 out of 60 for the second stage. Um, with the Chevys pitting first. Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain both get a speeding penalty. And Chase Elliott does not get a good pit stop. He ends up losing the pack and the draft and would get lapped. Uh, Josh Balicki got an improper fueling penalty. 28 to go in the stage. The Fords would pit, and then the Toyotas shortly thereafter. Kevin Harvick and Chris Buescher both got speeding penalties. Hamlin got a speeding penalty and overshot his pit stall. And then on the pass through for the original speeding penalty, he got another speeding penalty. Like, and it was the same section both times. That's what makes it so so much more hilarious, honestly. So he ends up going a lap down after all of that. Uh, Kurt Busch actually got, got a black flag and had to go down pit road due to smoke from his car, and then the caution would come out for fluid on the backstretch. Kurt does make it down to pit road, but he, he had, they had a fryer in the, in the front or whatever. They opened the hood. He went behind the garage for an oil line leak. Actually, he would come back to the race, which means they fixed it. Um, Harvick ended up having a crew member over the wall too soon penalty there. Um, and then as we come to one to go at the end of stage two, we get another caution. Uh, like literally coming down the front stretch to take the one to go. Uh, Denny Hamlin got turned. I wrote in my notes he got turned into Martin Truex Jr. He actually got turned by Martin Truex Jr. Um, and it caused and it caused the Hendrick teammates of Byron, Elliott, and Bowman to kind of all get sandwiched together in a in a way. Uh, but they were really the only ones that were involved in the wreck. Um. And Bubba Wallace would get his first career stage victory. He led a lot of laps early on and throughout the race. Uh, Kozlowski second, McDowell third, Kyle Busch fourth, Priest fifth, which is huge for him. Ryan Blaney sixth, Chris Buescher seventh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. eighth, Christopher Bell ninth, and Harrison Burton in his debut would grab tenth. He obviously doesn't get stage points because he's not running the Cup Series, but still pretty awesome to see him there. Uh, Denny Hamlin would get the, would not get the free pass. Um, cause he was, that was the thing. Like people were like, well, why the fuck is like Bob or whatever, or somebody blocking a lap down car? Cause Hamlin was a lap down. He was still up there and it would be the same with Kurt Busch a little later on. No matter where you are, whether you're a lap down or you're on the lead lap, if you're in the lead pack, you're going to get treated like a lead lap car pretty much. Um, he ended actually. He actually ended up getting lapped down again uh, while on pit road. 
Um, Anthony Alfredo completely misses his pit box, so he had to back up. He had to wait and then back up to get in. Um, Alex Bowman could not make it back um, under the damage vehicle policy. His day is done. Um, and then we get going with stage three. Both this and the Xfinity race had a lot of moves that were going on. And there were some saves at times, but we never got to see a big one. And I th- honestly, I'm okay with that because that's, I mean, that's always the biggest fear. And, and you know, and everybody's like, you know, when's it going to happen? We really have it. And again, we didn't see that in either race. And I'm honestly okay with that um, because I don't, you know, we don't need to see that. But then again, when we get back here in the fall, I bet you tend to, I, I bet you that we're going to see a big one in both the Xfinity and the cup races. And I believe trucks is trucks. will be there as well. So who knows? We could see one there as well. So with about 33 laps to go, Chevy's come down pit road. Toyota's came down around the same, about the, actually at the same time. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse jr. <laughs> coming down to pit road. He spins, gets into the wall, the inside wall a little bit, like he like bumped it or whatever. And, but he collects his car. He does make it down pit road. No caution. Um, and basically what happened was Quinn Half came off the bumper of Anthony Alfredo and Half got basically guy and got turned and that's what got him into Stenhouse. But again, no caution. Ryan Newman would get a speeding penalty. The Ford would come down pit road with a, for, with about 30 to go. Ryan Newman got another speeding penalty while serving the first one. And then we got a caution, um, on the backstretch, Quinn Half into the wall on the backstretch, um, cause his tire went down. But he stayed out of the way of everybody, which helps, or which helped. Um, Matt Benedetto and Eric Jones would stay out. Most of the others pit. Uh, Ryan Preece got a penalty for a crew member for the wall too soon. Quinn Howe, his day would be done. Um, and then we get going, and we get down to about two or three to go. Caution comes out for debris on the racetrack. It was a tire carcass, and that came from Marsh Riggs Jr. Now, there was a bit of confusion. How the fuck did that happen? Now... Actually, what happened was Martin Shakes Jr. cut a tire, saved it in turns three and four, by the way, came down pit road, and they fixed it. And apparently, according to one of my buddies on Twitter, who was an MTJ fan, uh, apparently what happened was um, he ended up cutting another tire, and that was the tire that came out on the racetrack. So, Because I saw some people were like, oh, that was a, a dickhead move. You know, him staying out, got the caution, got it, got it. I think, it, I think if you look back, You'll see what happened. Uh, but anyway, caution did come out. And I felt really bad for Matt DiBenedetto here because he was leading and coming to two to go. And I think he would he could have won. I mean, we could have still seen a wreck or something, but I think he would have won uh, if that didn't happen. Um, so, we again, caution for debris. Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace pit. Everybody else stays out. And so we get the restart. And it's fucking madness. Matt Benedetto, he would take the white flag, but unfortunately would not take the checkered flag. Unfortunately, basically what happened was um, he went up to the top of the middle to get, or he might have been there already with his teammate Ryan Blaney, and Tyler Reddick kind of fucked it up. I think I, I think he tried to go down and he screwed it up, or he got out of line or something, and De Benedetto just did not have enough of a push to stay up there and Brad Keselowski would pick up his first win of the 2021 season um his sixth career win at Talladega which uh now I believe puts him in a tie for second um in all-time wins at Talladega uh obviously the record holder is Dale Earnhardt Sr. with 10 um but again Keselowski won uh Ross Chastain and Eric Jones both wrecked coming to the line Jones wrecked coming through the trioval bunch of guys moved basically everybody moved down to you know get to avoid it nothing really happened there but then the weird part is that as everybody is that as it looks like everybody's moving back up somehow chastain either gets loose or his car just turns left and it spin spins uh slides whatever and uh and he ends up hitting the inside wall both of them were uh released from the infield care center they're both okay uh, so that's good to see. Um, but again, Kozlowski won. Uh, De Benedetto still ended up finishing in the top five. Kaz Grohl actually finished sixth, which is pretty awesome to see. Overall, I enjoyed both, and I, overall, I enjoyed both races. 
I, I was really rooting for Matt Benedetto to win there, especially after what happened the last time we were at Talladega. But it is what it is. Um, and I just feel bad for Benedetto. So we'll have to see what happens next time around. But Brad Kozlowski, he becomes the ninth winner through 10 races in the Cup Series season so far. This is crazy. We only have, we've have we only had one repeat winner so far. And keep in mind, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, the two guys with the most wins last year, as well as Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch, among others, have yet to win a race this season. Really, though, I think those are the four that we are all expecting to get a win. And I think they will at some point. Hamlin's going to, obviously Hamlin's going to win a race. Harvick, we'll see what happens because SHR has not been uh, the same SHR that they've been before. They've all been struggling, uh, but there's still a chance that, that that he could still at least get one win. Um, I would think he would. Uh, Elliot, he's going to get a win at some point. He, all, you know, you could definitely argue he should have had a win at the Daytona road course. He's going to win at least one of the road course races. Let's be honest here. Um, and Kyle Busch, we'll just have to see when it happens. He just needs to get rid of the bad luck. But aside from all of that, this is going to make things really interesting because you look at the guys that have already won and look at who could repeat. Obviously, Martin Truex Jr. has won twice, so he's de- he could at least get a couple more wins. Kislowski's probably going to get a couple more wins now that he has won. Larson's probably going to get a- at least one more win this year. You look at some of the other others, Bowman, Bell, McDowell. Actually, if Kozlowski fails inspection, McDowell will get his second win of the year. How crazy would that be? Um, or, I know, either him or either him or Byron's going to get it. Um, but either way, actually, well, yeah, um, I forget who finished second. But either way, one of the two of them will get their second win of the year if Kozlowski fails inspection. But regardless. Um, so... We'll just have to see what happens here. It, this is crazy. It really is, honestly. But, again, congrats to, Bra- to Brad Kozlowski on the win. Again, make sure to check out the description below. Links will be down there. Go check them all out. And uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe for more content like this. I will see you all next time. Peace.